Hi, my name is Da Costa and in this video I will uh, attempt to demonstrate a small little utility application that I got a chance to program recently called the DC Random Man Denoiser. And as a technical director, I always try to stay on top of things, on top of changes that are happening with all these render engines out there. And specifically, while researching some of the changes with uh, Random Man version 23, I got some great help from the community, especially by uh, Alexander Weide, uh, who has who runs his own uh, Random Man Discord support channel, and some other people inside of there as well. And as a thank you for all the help that I got, I programmed this uh, small little application to help with some uh, problems related to Random Man denoising. Um, as some of you might know, I also started teaching how to program with Python in Houdini uh, a while ago. I had a small break due to some uh, corona related logistics, but I uh, I'm planning to start soon with the production of these uh, lessons. And in one of these lessons, um, I am actually uh, showing this project as an example. So I will show how to program something like this from beginning to end. So if you want to learn how to program something similar as what I'm about to show you, then uh, you might enjoy watching the playlist in the VFX Lessons YouTube channel. I will add the link below this video. So in this video, we will briefly uh, discuss the Random Man Denoiser, which is uh, pretty great, actually. Um, but also what this little application, what kind of problems it alleviates when you decide to use the Random Man Denoiser in production. Um, then after that, we will briefly show how to install it and how to use it on an actual render sequence, on a small EXR render sequence. So with that said, let's just dive in and take a look, shall we? So companies like Disney and Pixar has been quite innovative in the last half decade or so. They also produced a render engine called Hyperion, as some of you might know. And it has some pretty neat features and innovations inside of it. I can uh, suggest the reading of this article written by uh, FX Guide quite a while ago. Uh, but one of the things that was introduced in Hyperion was a very nice denoiser. And the denoiser that was inside of Hyperion is also the denoiser that we have nowadays inside of Random Man. So if we look at the research that both Disney and Pixar has been heavily invested in, then we can see how it led to such a great denoising methodology. As you can see here, researchers from both Disney and Pixar, together with researchers from several of universities, they have been working on denoising methodologies and algorithms for quite a while now, and they have written some very, very interesting papers about this topic. So, after studying all of this, it made me quite curious about just the general quality of the denoiser that is built in to Random Man at the moment. So I started uh, using it for a while and just testing it out. And well, to be short, I, 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 I like it a lot. I like the quality of the denoiser a lot and the flexibility that comes with it as well. But it's just one little detail in the way we have to implement it in production that uh, I, together with several other users, didn't like as much. And that's what this little application that I uh, programmed will attempt to solve. So let's go to Houdini real quick and look at the problem firsthand. The problems that my little utility application attempts to solve are threefold. I can best demonstrate it by showing you how you would normally use the Random Man Denoiser and that way I can show you the difference in workflow together with some of the main advantages of using the DC Random Man Denoiser tool in production. So normally when you want to use a denoiser with Random Man, you have your Random Man Rob, as you can see here, and you add the denoiser, the denoise node below and you connect them and you have to make sure this is set to node by node instead of frame by frame. 
And this is already one of the main problems with this workflow. So let's say you have a scene with 120 frames and at frame 57 your render crashes. So it then never gets to the actual denoising part for the first uh, 56 frames that you have finished already. In order to get any denoised data you have to start all over again. If you want to be able to denoise after the render is finished then you would normally have to code stuff yourself or use the command line tools to do that. Um, so our little uh, denoiser application will allow us to bypass this node altogether. Secondly, when you use the renderman denoiser node if you want to start the render you have to click on this little button right here and you might be used to use this button to actually start the render process. So let's say you have a production with a lot of different iterations. It can occur that uh, at times you will forget to press uh, this button and accidentally press this button, uh, making sure you will have no denoised data after the process. So this whole little utility application will allow us to bypass this node altogether. Of course there are still the same things we have to set up to make sure denoised data will be will work correctly. You have to make sure that in the image tab you use this checkbox. So the EXR sequence will know this will be denoised afterwards and you have to make sure this is set to open EXR. And then you can just pick whatever file path you need. You can set your frame range uh, to whatever frame range you desire and you click on render as normal. The denoiser tool will override this setting right here. Normally when you have a single frame you set it to single frame and when you have multiple frames you can best set it to cross frame. Uh, but we will be able to override this with the denoiser tool itself. Just, just make sure you have this checkbox turned on and you have it set to open EXR and you have all the data you need to actually denoise. So the first problem that my utility application solves is the need to use the ROP denoise node below this random man node. Uh, that way when your render crashes you can just continue to render where it stopped and finish the process. When you have your rendered frames on disk you can safely focus on the denoising process afterwards and this separation of concern makes the process less stressful but also less error prone as, we have, as I have shown a few seconds ago. Uh, secondly, it eliminates the risk of you clicking on the wrong render button, especially in productions with many iterations that can be quite a lifesaver. And thirdly, when you are offered the opportunity to perform the denoising process in post, you can tweak the denoising setting, the settings in much more details as you will see in a second. Otherwise, if you use the denoiser node while rendering as usual, as I have shown a few seconds ago, then you are stuck with whatever it gives you out of the box without the opportunity to change it afterwards without having to code things yourself again. So having said all of this, let us install the DC RenderMan denoiser and use it on some rendered frames to see how it works with some rendered EXR files. So let us look at how to install and use the DC RenderMan denoiser on some actual rendered frames. So I will offer you the link to this page underneath the YouTube video. You can just click on this zip file and then you will see this download button over here. So you can save save link as. I will just add it to my desktop. And then here, if you wait a second, it just added the zip file. I will unpack it real quick. So I have it in this folder and it's just an install file as you can see. You can just click it and accept. It will then ask you for a preferred language. I will just go with English in this case. And you can just say next a few times for the default folders. It will create a desktop icon and a start menu folder. You can uncheck it if you wish. And a name. And it will install it. So let us just wait a few seconds. It also creates an uninstaller, so you can get rid of it if you don't like it quite easily. 
So I can then launch, launch this random and denoiser tool. So the easiest way to use it is with uh, some default settings. If you keep in mind, you have a, you need to have random man installed, of course, but in, in there you have the random man pro server folder, the bin folder, and you can point it to the denoise.exe. If you want to use a different version than this one, there's no problem. You can just add it here and select that one or just rewrite this. I will also have an option that you can use a environment variable later on. And if you have some environment variables uh, in your computer, it will look for them first. And if you don't have them, you can. it will look for this second after that. I will add the description about the process uh, in the GitHub later on. But the easiest way to use it, I have here a folder with a few test frames. So let me copy this URL. Um, the way this works is it will detect how many threads your computer has at the moment and then just subtract one of those threads. You can of course just choose a different number if you wish. Um, the easiest way to use it is just to say select your render sequence and then go to the folder and just select whatever it is that you have to denoise. Um, you can say to use or not use a GPU, but the easiest way to use it is just to leave everything at default and just say denoise your render. And if you look here, it will start denoising and it will add the denoised files inside of the same folder that you had the actual rendered files. In this case, I only had three frames. So in a second, I will have three denoised EXR files, as you can see here. Let me quickly delete this. Um, a different thing that you can do is to add a different folder, a custom folder. Let me call this denoised. And let me close this just to show what I'm doing right here. Um, it's important, by the way, uh, in your actual folder where you have the frames, not to have any special characters in here or spaces like this. Try to keep this just one word. This will uh, make sure that everything works as desired. So now I have this extra folder called denoised. Let me open the random man denoiser again and just show you a few features that I have built in. So one of the things you can do is to select a directory for the denoised files. In this case, uh, I will go with this denoised folder that we just created right here. Um, I will go with GPU denoising again. There are some cases that it can be uh, a, a little bit problematic, depending on what kind of a GPU that you have. Then you can just try again and say no. Um, built in to the random man denoiser is the feature to skip the first frame or the last frame. The default here is no, but you can say yes if you wish. Um, as you as you saw before, it adds the name filtered.exr to the actual file name. That's the default behavior of this. You can give it a different suffix and it will use that instead. Um, we just added a custom directory for the denoised files. Here you can say I want to use the cross frame filter mode like we saw in the actual denoise node in Houdini. Um, there are a few uh, filter types. It's set to default by default, of course, but you also have several pre-made filters that you can choose, as you can see here. So if you don't like the, like the result of the one of these, you can just try again and try a different one. One thing that I want to point out is if you want to run this whole denoiser process again, it's best to close the denoiser and just open it again. That will guarantee the best result. And you can select the desired thread count. And by default, it will just default uh, uh, subtract something from the maximum threads that it can use on the machine that you have at the moment. So now um, by selecting render like this, the render sequence, I can just run it again. 
and if we go to the denoised folder that we just created and here they are coming in when this frame is done by the way this little command line thingy will inform us if the denoising is completed or not so if we just wait a second it says frame 3 has been denoised successfully as well and this is my complete uh, range so this is how to use the DC random man denoiser um, so they are these are just features that are built into the actual command line tools themselves but it just gives us um, a nice user interface to use it more easily without having artists programming stuff themselves in the command line a few last things that I would like to mention is uh, that I do have a better looking version of this little tool uh, in a black user interface um, looking a little bit more modern maybe um, on top of that uh, the code generated uh, the code behind this tool I will show all of this um, I will explain all of this code in the new in a new video that I will share in this playlist on the programming with Python in Houdini course that I'm uploading to YouTube. I had a little bit of a break due to some Corona logistics, but um, I expect to be uploading more videos soon. And in one of those, I will break down the code behind this uh, DC random man denoise and several other tools that I, I have uh, finished uh, already as well. I will upload some preview videos of those other tools uh, soon on the YouTube channel as well. And with that said, I hope this tool will prove itself to be useful in your daily render activities. So my name is Da Costa. I hope to see you on my YouTube channel at VFX Lessons. If you want to learn how to do this yourself, then please subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you there. Bye. Thank you.